It looks like my fan club had a Google Hangout a while ago. Alright, uh, hello everyone, I'm Tom. This guy is a very special kind of silly. He used to claim that he was an atheist, but then he sent me a message that said that you are angry at IP because his is doing a great job at turning people to theism, and I'm one of these's people. I don't know what I saw in your videos. I'm now a theism. <laughs> Not because of IP arguments and videos, but because I saw you are response to IP and saw how dishonest you were. Clearly this guy is a paragon of rationality. Of course he never says in this message what he thinks I was dishonest about. I haven't been dishonest about a fucking thing, but I did show inspiring philosophy to be dishonest. Which was pretty easy given that IP frequently forgets that screenshots are a thing that exists. Yohannan Ratz is in there too. And he made a video some time ago arguing that I hypocritically cite Sean Carroll in some of my videos, but don't understand Sean Carroll's physics. Ratz thinks that Sean Carroll's ideas corroborate Ratz's idealist conception of the universe. The problem is that this isn't what Sean Carroll believes, so he accuses Sean Carroll of also not understanding Sean Carroll's physics. Look up in the upper right corner of the page, a little slogan he has on the top of his blog. That one, yep. Read it. In truth, only atoms are the void. And the void. Uh, that's oh, yeah, you know, the that, that, slogan that, from Democritus, right? A lot of information directly contradicts that. Yeah, I mean, it's basically like <laughs> we have this advanced model of emergent space time from quantum information, and because of this, this proves that the, the, the um, this is the final triumph of science in proving materialism, democracy, and. He, he's great. Retard. Carol's failure to subscribe to Platonist quantum woo makes him a retard. Apparently, it should be obvious that there is a reason that there are, you know, there are these quantum probabilities that exist in nature that are producing these interference patterns. It wasn't you know just magic that created the interference pattern, the double slit experiment. Oh yeah, There's I've been researching on that. Right, and I understand yet, that, but yet despite that, because of their absurdly positivistic instrumentalist uh, you know approach. They're like just dafted in the head when it comes to, yes, an actual thing in reality caused that interference pattern there, you know? That's just, just a, a, a instrumentalist, um, you know, approximation or a, a useful fiction or something. I mean, like, good grief. What the fuck does it mean for probabilities to exist in nature? What does it mean to say that abstract mathematical concepts exist at all? Ratz believes that platonic forms exist despite their obvious incoherence. But what these folks really take issue with is my video about abortion. Because this is okay, very interesting. I just want to like, pa like pause and like look at the title. It says, um, is a fetus human? And that's just, well... You know, that's an unscientific that's an unscientific sort of thing if you're trying to question that. I'm not trying to question that. The whole point of that video is that a fetus is human, but that this is irrelevant. A corpse is human too. The fact that an organism is human per se is not what gives it moral value. Um whether or not a fetus is a human being That's every medical human. textbook even, ever even if you were said talking that. about even if you were talking about a skin cell. A skin cell a skin this right cell, here, human yeah. Human would yeah. be human. So this this is a this is a stupid question to begin with. I right, go back to the screenshot though. All or right, you, uh, show me the show me what he said. Okay, then this right here, he. Uh, okay, yeah. my position isn't based on argument at all. It's based on my conscience. The whole point I'm making is that is it. Um... Still, my. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. Go, no, go back, go back, go back. Here, uh, I, I, listen. I'm not that good at reading, but I'll try my best. Uh, my position isn't based on an argument at all. It's based on my consciousness. The whole point I'm making in this video is that my position is one that I cannot help but hold. I'm not saying that it uh, that makes it right. I'm saying that it will be the position I hold regardless of whatever it is or it is not right. Wait, hold on. Didn't you? There was another one you had about how he said that even. Um, oh yes, I'll get. I'll get to that. That's I, I the found one I'm looking comments. for. That's the one I'm looking for. Right. Not I found these comments yet. right here, but uh, I want to go over this, like how messed up this is. So even if it's not right, he won't change his position. Just wow. It's not just that I won't. I can't. The prohibition of abortion is simply not something I'm psychologically capable of tolerating. It makes no sense to say that I ought to accept prohibiting abortion because ought implies can. Yeah. He's, ex and he's saying that openly, so you... Yeah, and that's that. the thing, you know, he... Because he doesn't believe in objective morality. He has a video saying he doesn't actually believe in objective morality, so of course well, he's I mean, not going to believe oh, it. Oh, so... Go back to so, that comment, though. Okay. okay. Now, this is interesting here. Um, okay, 
hypothetically, what if there were some freak discovery tomorrow that proved to us that fetuses are perfectly aware of all the pain and abortions cause them incredible suffering? Uh, that's not even a freak discovery. That's actually like science. I mean, they, they yeah. yeah, I mean, science shows that, they, that they I have looked this up myself. The yeah. capacity to, I forget what the link was, but like by 12 weeks, they're able to like sense pain, you know? You know, that's, you know, just the end of the first trimester, at least, you know? And so now, that, that wouldn't change my position. I'd still rather be one of those fetuses rather than someone forced to give birth. Now, in this context, he's in the video, he was talking about the sort of Rawlsian, um, you know, original position where you you put yourself into this position. Like, it's like a, basically you put everyone involved into a, a blind situation where they have to pick out of a hat of what person they might end up being, right? You know, uh, a baby that's going to get aborted, a mother, you know, et cetera, that needs to abort, et cetera. And so everyone has an equal chance of being aborted or aborting, right? And ironically, when this same exact thing came up in philo um, political philosophy class way back, I was like, you know, this is, I think most people would think that if there was a chance they'd be aborted, you know, to say we had this weird situation where anyone could be aborted, right? Um, like, what was the name of that movie? Uh the one that just came out, not just came out, like last year it came out on the whole, um, the purge. Yeah. I was going to say the purge. like, like so imagine we had a society where there was the purge and anyone had a chance of being quote unquote aborted, right? No one would be for abortion. The Purge is a story about adults being murdered. It's not analogous to abortion. I'd far rather go through the few minutes of pain involved in getting aborted as a fetus, because it would be long before I could form any hopes or dreams that the end of my life would prevent me from fulfilling. It would be before I have any idea of what death even is. Being forced to give birth against my will could result in decades of psychological trauma and a profound change in the direction of my life, and in my well-being in addition to the discomfort of the birthing process itself. Why would anyone prefer that over a few minutes of pain. The other thing I wanted to point out here is remember what he said about complaining that he balking at my my you know attempt to lob a Molotov cocktail in the discussion session and be like, well they deserve to live in an authoritarian society where they can be cruelly unusually punished type of thing, you know? Um he's in favor of cruel and unusual punishment here. He's saying so explicitly. Like Hypothetically, what if there was some freak discovery? Well, it's not even a freak discovery. It, it, that's just science. Um, go back. Uh, uh, it's right it? here. I got right here. I'll read it myself. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see here. Is it right here? Oh, wait. Maybe this is just uh, let's go back up really quick. Right, okay, uh, go, 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 oh, go, 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 go back. Go back. Go back down. Okay, that one too. Okay, well, both of them. I like, see. We stopped there, but oh, then go on. down after I think I'll read this really quick. He's saying, okay. hypothetically, what if there was some freak discovery tomorrow that proved to us that fetuses are perfectly aware of all pain and abortions caused them incredible suffering? And his response was, that wouldn't change my position. I would still rather be one of those fetuses than be someone forced to give birth. Yeah, I bet he's saying that. That's, because he's no, just saying that outright. He's saying he's, I, I think he's abortion just was proven to be cruel and unusual punishment. I would still be in favor of it. Johanna seems to think that this is hypocrisy on my part. However, if someone is immutably committed to getting an abortion, we have two options, to permit it or to not permit it. If both of these options are cruel, then cruelty is unavoidable. If someone is opposed to cruelty, but their only options are to choose between a greater cruelty and a lesser one, the sensible thing to do would be to advocate the lesser cruelty. There's absolutely nothing hypocritical about that. I'd rather suffer the few minutes of pain of being aborted than suffer the potentially decades of trauma that result from being forced to give birth and living in a world in which others are subjected to that same greater cruelty. Also, Leo the press and munderer Stockwell has been spamming my videos with links to this hangout. He says, hey, can you put out uh, any scientific evidence that say that a fetus is put of the woman's body? He meant to say part of the woman's body. I pointed out that I never argued that a fetus is part of a woman's body. He responds, wow, you are such an lair in your video abortion and bodily autonomy, you say it. You are unalienable. What I actually actually said was that abortion is not a bodily autonomy issue because the fetus is part of the woman's body. Leo's misunderstood this sentence. In this sentence, I am rejecting the argument that the fetus is part of the woman's body. I am saying that abortion is a bodily autonomy issue, but this is because the fetus has unavoidable effects on the woman's body and not because I think the fetus is part of the woman's body. I acknowledge that the fetus is not part of the woman's body. 
Leo also says, and tell me why it is that stabling someone in the kidney would rightly be considered cruel and unusual punishment. And what if we discovered that the fetus dose feel pain and suffering and you said that wouldn't change my position, so you're fine with murder? Leo seems to think that believing that morality is subjective is equivalent to being okay with stabling, mundering, and murdering people. This is the level of herp fucking derp apologists throw at me nowadays. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard, but I do have a Patreon.